God, the 90s were weird. Like that. It's gonna be fine. Garlic bread. Ooh. Absolutely brilliant. Me on the toilet. <laughs> when to become one. I think she's losing it. Hello everybody, how are we all? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the episode of Come Dine With Us, which is week two, and this is the second instalment of our Come Dine With Us series, or the second season of Come Dine With Us series. If you haven't watched an episode before, or if you are a returning viewer, returning viewer, a returning viewer, myself, Kate McCabe, and Mr. Carrington get together every single week, and we create a dish that is inspired by Come Dine With Me. We called it Come Dine With Us, and we center it around a theme. So last week we did the theme of what we had in our cupboards. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below and I'll pop it up in the little tab here. You can watch it. I was on main course, you and did the dessert, Kate did the starter, and it was absolutely brilliant. This week is our second theme, and Kate came up with the idea of having food from our childhood slash throwback foods. So we're talking food from the era that we were born. So I was born in the 90s. I was a late 90s baby. So everything from my era was like Capri Suns. We had like spaghetti hoops and like ravioli, Sunny D, um, oh God, like turkey dinosaurs, turkey twizzlers. None of that is going to be happening in this video. Like some really throwback foods. So I had a bit of a think. So I'm on starters this week. Kate is doing the dessert and Ewan is doing the main course. So I thought what on earth can I make that is something that I had from my childhood as a starter? Now, I was a bit of a porky child, and I used to skip the starter and just prioritise my dessert. In fact, I probably have a lot of dessert. So um, I, had, I had to ever think, because I didn't really have a lot in the fridge. So I came up with the idea of making garlic bread. So garlic bread for me, I'd go for it every time. I'd have cheesy garlic bread, I'd have garlic bread, pizza garlic bread, anything around bread. I was just a very carb-centered child, so yeah. Garlic bread, we're making garlic bread. We're gonna do a mozzarella garlic bread, and I thought we could bring it back into the 2020 years that we do love now, and I'm gonna make a hummus as well, so it's a bit of a bougie throwback dish for a starter, but yeah, cheesy garlic bread and homemade hummus. So that's on the menu. Now we need to find out what Ewan, Mr. Carrington, has in store for the main course, and what Kate has in store for dessert, so. Let's go. You guys have been watching along at home for quite some time now. You know the drill. We need to find out what everyone else is making. So let's take a look at this week's menu. First up, we've got Ewan on with the main course. Hello, I'm Ewan, and tonight I'm going to be bringing you the main course. We're going to be heading back to the 90s, and I'm going to be attempting to make IKEA's iconic meatballs. Okay, interesting. Very intrigued to how that's going to turn out. And let's find out what Kate is doing for dessert. I'm Kate and I'm making pudding tonight. I'm doing a throwback to kind of my childhood and biscuits that I used to like to eat and I still like to eat them a lot now. It's called custard cream blondies. That's what I'm making and I'm going to be serving them with a lovely pot of tea. Oh, okay. Again, glad she's not doing meringues. <laughs> okay, I will stop um, ripping it out of you for the meringues one day, I promise. Um, that sounds amazing. I absolutely love that. So yeah, we've got an interesting menu this week. Right. Finish my tea, let's get cracking with some garlic bread. I'll show you what you're gonna need. Okay, so this is all of the ingredients you're gonna need. These are for the garlic bread, and this is for the hummus. Um, I've written out the recipe, and I will link them down below. This one is a Paul Hollywood recipe. Anyone who's a fan of the Great British Bake Off will know he's the king of bread. And this is the hummus recipe that we're gonna use. Um, so for the garlic bread, you're gonna need now. It does say strong white bread flour in the recipe. I don't have strong white bread flour. I haven't been able to get bread flour in the longest time, so we're gonna use plain flour. Did a bit of research. It might not have the same structure because it hasn't got protein. It's a very complicated thing. I'm just gonna put a bit more yeast in. It's fine. Got some salt, whole bulb of garlic, which we've got to roast. Got some olive oil. And then we just need to add some mozzarella and some mature cheddar cheese to top it off. We also need some sugar, but I haven't gotten that down yet. And then for the hummus, obviously we just need some chickpeas, mm -hmm. some tahini, lemon juice, and we're also gonna add garlic and olive oil to that too. It's so literally stock with ingredients and a bit of cheese. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. It actually isn't getting hot today, it's actually very, very cold, but I need to put my apron on. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start by making the bread because that's gonna take the longest. It needs to prove twice, so we need to prove it once and then prove it again. So I'll do that and then we'll make the hummus. So let's get cracking. Okay, I'm gonna put my glasses on not to try and look more intelligent, but I just can't actually see. So we need to put 250 grams of strong white bread flour, which we don't have, so we're just gonna use regular plain flour into a bowl along with the salt, yeast, olive oil, and water. So I'm gonna do it in my fancy schmancy KitchenAid, and I've also got the door hook attachment on here as well. If you haven't got one of these, do not worry. You can do it by hand, you just need a bit more elbow grease. It also says make sure not to let the salt and yeast touch before you start mixing it, because apparently that can kill yeast or something. It's a very scientific being of bread, apparently. Okay, so we're just gonna open up the KitchenAid mixer, pop, the ball in and under, lock it in. We're gonna start it on a slow speed first and then crank it up. Uh, yeah, it has to knead for five minutes until the dough has formed and then you pop it in an oiled bowl to proof for two hours in a warm spot. So that's what we're gonna do. So this door has been working for around five minutes and if you just scrape it off the door you can see it's quite like elastic and it's looking good. So I'm just going to take off this attachment and I just need to oil the bowl, pop the door back in, pop a damp tea towel over and let this rise for around an hour, an hour and a half until it's doubled in size. Okay so now I'm going to make the hummus. I definitely didn't have hummus as a child and it wasn't a 90s thing. I, I mean, it pre presumably wasn't maybe Greece, but I never had hummus, and if you said, do you want some hummus to me as a child, I probably would have thought you were nuts, but now, obviously, I love it, and I just thought it'd be a nice thing to include in something to dip the garlic bread in, so that's what we're gonna do. And I guess as a kid, now you can have like hummus and carrot sticks, so the logic was there. Okay, so into your food processor, we need to add some tahini. Now this, I think is made with sesame, roasted pulled sesame seeds, that is literally what tahini is. So we need three tablespoons of tahini and that's gonna go directly into the food processor. So that's one. Now this is just a base recipe for hummus. Of course you can do, you know, whatever you want. You can pop, um, well of course you can pop anything in. I mean, you can do beetroot hummus, roasted caramelized onion hummus, you could, I mean, the, the list ends sweet chili hummus, you can flavour it, colour it, do whatever you want with it. Hummus is probably one of, like, my favourite things of all time ever, I absolutely love it. And then we need to add in two cloves of garlic that I'm just going to chop and then mince in. Okay, so we just need to zest in some lemon, and then we're going to add the juice in my lime squeezer that is definitely meant for limes, not lemons, but we can make it work. Okay, so now we need to add in 60ml of olive oil. The recipe actually calls for, I think it's 90 or 80, but we'll just add 60 and then save the rest for the topping. So we're just gonna give this a quick blend and then we're gonna add the chickpeas. So I have just rinsed these chickpeas. These are just chickpeas out of a can. Um, you can peel the chickpeas if you like, but I mean, I mean, you do have time to be peeling chickpeas to be fair, but I, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna blend this up for around five minutes. Okay, so I added a little splash of water. The recipe says you can add around 30 mils of water if it needs to, if the hummus, if hummus? <laughs> if the thummus, if the hummus is a bit too thick, but I think that's perfect consistency. That literally looks like hummus, which is great. Um, I just need to season it with some salt, and um, yeah, that's it. You can pop it in a ramekin, and this will keep in the fridge, or we're gonna have it a bit later on with some olive oil hummus, um, a little bit of harissa stirred through, and the garlic bread. So it's gonna be delicious. I'm just gonna pop this in a little ramekin and pop it in the fridge. Okay, so the dough has had around, mm, I'd say like an hour and a half-ish to rise, and it's pretty much double in size, which is great. So what I need to do is just punch the air out, and then divide it up into two baguette-like shapes. And then I need to roast some garlic, so that's what I'm going to do now. So what you want to do now is make a fist and like punch the air out of the door and then just scrape the back from the sides with a little bit of olive oil on a countertop. Again, just making sure that it doesn't stick. You don't really want to use flour, otherwise that can actually dry out the loaf. So we've got the door there and with a door cutter or some kind of cutter, just cut it in half. So that is going to make our two balls of baguettes. And then I guess we just wanna try and mold them into some form 
of baguette, like shape. And then I've just grabbed an oiled baking tray here and I'm just gonna rub a little bit of oil on my tray, like so, and pop the two, I'm gonna say they're baguette shapes-ish, more like flatbreads. And then they just need to rise again for a second peru for around an hour near somewhere warm. So I thought we could have a quick trip down memory lane while the bread is just proven. And I've just asked my mum to have a little look through some pictures as Midi as a child. Um, obviously they were there all at home in Durham. And she's just sent some through. There is a running theme in every single baby photo of me throwback from the 90s. I always have food either in my mouth or around my mouth or in my hand about to go into my mouth. You will see. This first picture is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's me sat in my high chair, rocking quite a snazzy little jumper. And I have the rosiest cheeks. Um, you can still see I have full on hamster cheeks. Still have them now, I'm not this chiseled divine guy I wish I was. Um, and yeah, I've got food or milk or some kind of... <laughs> God, even stop laughing. Some kind of something around my mouth, which the next one again, food related, sat on the countertops with my um, hand about to go in buttered toast. I think that's, I can't believe it's not butter. And we've got some corp milk. I've got some groovy little pajamas going on there. I just absolutely love that. Look at my cheeks as well and my eyelashes. God, that's bad. Again, another photo of me as a child with a yogurt in my hand. <laughs> Absolutely covered in it on my mouth. I've got it all over my nose, which is just, again, a very, very normal occurrence for me. Also quite like my outfit here. These chunky trainers are quite iconic. And last but not least, me on the toilet. <laughs> I mean, God, look at those tiles. I don't even know where that is. I think that might be my nana's house. She used to live in Spain. I'm very tan, so I'm presuming this is on holiday. Why on earth I'm sat on like that on the toilet? I absolutely do not know. Um, God, I think this was coming into the stage where I started to grow into my body, but I still had a belly. I don't know why I'm on the toilet like that. Let, let's just skip past that. <laughs> God, the 90s were weird. Okay, so I may have had a bit of a disaster with the garlic. I don't know what it is about the second season of Come Dine With Us, but I am having kitchen disaster after kitchen disaster. Um, I've roasted garlic before, but I feel like this, either the oven was too hot, or I don't really know, but it's, it's, it's definitely not how it should be. But fear not, we have more garlic. So I'm just gonna crush some garlic up, mix it with a little bit of olive oil and butter, and pop it in the bread like that. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so what the recipe now says to do is to pop a oven tray in the bottom of an oven to preheat slightly. And it needs to be in there for about five minutes. I'll come down and then you grab some uh, cold water and throw that in the tray and it makes like steam to make like a nice crust on the bread. So I'm gonna do that. So the bread's had about, I'd say a good another half an hour just to prove. So the recipe says to just use a bread knife and cut some slashes in the top like this. And then I'm gonna get some of this garlic butter that I've just had softening on the side with the herbs and just tuck that in to the bread like so. And this is probably gonna like melt and ooze and go all over, but that's fine because that's part of the joy of making garlic bread. So it's gonna wedge that in. Memes are absolutely love garlic bread. So this is definitely gonna go down a treat, hopefully if it's nice and edible. <laughs> Okay, so these are now ready to go into the oven and I'm gonna throw in some steam as well and bake them for half an hour. Water's going in. And then we put the garlic bread into the oven. Ah. Okay, so the timer has just gone off and I think the garlic bread, Woo! Oh my God, look at that. Oh, that looks amazing. That is two garlic loaves well. When to become one. Okay, so garlic bread is baked. Hummus is blended. Now all I have to do is dress up in something a little bit smarter. We're not doing a full suit this week. It's the 90s, we're throwing it back. We're gonna do something pretty chilled. I'm gonna melt some cheese in the garlic bread and it's gonna be delicious, right? I need to get out my slippers because I've been in these all day. To the wardrobe. <laughs> Thank you.
I think I can sense a bit of espionage going on. We've just had a message from Kate McCabe. She's running into some issues with um, the dessert she's making, the blondies. She's asked how long she has to leave them for. I'm a bit of salt on me brownie blondies. I think she's losing it. The video, but how long should I leave them for? Question for Luke, unless you would know. Ewan said apparently you should leave blondies to cool for five hours minimum and sprinkle them with salt. <laughs> I can send some competition about to arise. Okay, so now it's time to place everything up. So I've just got a really fancy board here. I'm gonna get the hummus out, zhuzh that up, and slice up some garlic baguette, and then melt some cheese. Okay, so I've just sliced up some of the garlic bread and popped them in like little finger sized pieces and I'm just gonna pop some mozzarella on top of some of them and then sprinkle the other parts with cheddar and then just pop them under the grill so they get nice and oozy. And this is gonna be the most delicious cheesy garlic bread in the world. Now time to try today's efforts and hope that they are actually worth it. I haven't made a cocktail this week because I know that I have to leave that down to you and if I know them well enough, I know there'll be some kind of delicious cocktail on the way. Kate might have even made one as well. I know she's part of a glass of wine. So pour myself a, gl a glass of wine. And um, I'm gonna dig into some of this delicious cheesy garlic bread. Here we go. I hope it's nice. Oh my god. Good lord. Okay. I hate to give it to Paul Hollywood, and I would like to take full credit for this recipe, but the man is a legend. Let's dip it in some of the hummus. I said, just stir a little bit of olive oil and harissa through it. I'm just gonna sit here with my glass of wine. Happy come dine with me, you and Kate. I can't wait to see what you've got in store. I also did put on my best 90s dad shirt. It's not particularly 90s, it's very much 2020, but it's quite a floral print. I feel like this is something that you definitely see maybe in your nan's curtains, but kind of here for it. Please do let me know what you think of it, and if you do try making your own bread at home, don't worry that if you only got plain flour, because this is just plain flour, and it's worked out absolutely brilliantly. Do check out Ewan's main course as well, I will link that down below, and also Kate's fantastic dessert, which I can't wait to see. That will also be linked down below as well. And if you do wanna check out any of the other episodes that we have filmed throughout this season or the last season, I will link all of them down below as well. There's a lot going on. I'm gonna drink my wine. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to click subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Check out Ewan and Kate. Happy come dine with us, and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.